guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and today what I thought we could do is just make some pretty 3D butterflies. So I'm just going to raise my camera slightly. I'm still trying to get used to this so I must apologise because I know that I've done a couple of videos lately where I wasn't aware obviously until the comments come up that I had been out of frame for um, you know parts of the video so I really do apologise for that and I will try and do better. So I thought I would just show you what we're going to make. So I've got this little pot here where I have, you know, mass made some butterflies already in the past. And I thought that we could just make a few um, butterflies in different styles, um, you know, to use in our junk journals. But basically when I say 3D, I mean, you can probably see there, they're made up of three pages usually. Um, and I just glue them together down the center, but they're just so, so cute. And so what I thought we could do these ones here, these shape ones, are some butterflies that I've kind of drawn freehand. And what I've done, <clears throat> I've made myself a little template. And then I can just draw around that and make some butterflies. Now, the best way that I found, I think, to make my template was actually, um, <laughs> weirdly, if you Google image, you know, butterfly templates... I must just check that I'm even in frame now. Um, butterfly templates or, you know, butterfly shapes and things like that. And then how I kind of drew my initial template was I just got some, <clears throat> some acetate and I just placed it against my screen and just drew round, you know, on the acetate. Please be careful that you don't draw onto your screen, but drew round the acetate with some permanent marker. And that's how I made my template. Now, I think I've probably still got the acetate one somewhere but I may have obviously mislaid it now because obviously over time I mislay everything um and then what I do I take my template and for instance if I wanted to make book page say I wanted you know a two book page and say a sheet music for the front what I would do oops is just take my pieces pop my butterfly on roughly where I want that and then I'm just going to cut round it so it's you know nice and small easier to handle and then just move that out of the way and then all I do is basically hold my butterfly in place because I mean again you know they don't have to be absolutely perfect and spot on the reason I don't draw around them um, is because, to be honest, I find that that's perhaps more hazardous, you know, because then I'm going to have all those kind of drawn lines and then going to have to rub them out. Or, you know, if I've drawn in pen, I'm going to have to cut close enough to the pen to actually get rid of the pen. So for me, I just find it actually easier to just, you know, cut around the shape whilst holding it. Now, obviously, I try not to let go of it at any point during the cutting, because if I do, you know, I, the chance are I'm not going to get it right back, you know, exactly in place with all the layers. But that's all I do. And then separate those out in my pieces. And then just going to ink it up. And I just ink all of my layers so I'll just ink them up like this. Now what I have done in the past is I've actually Mod Podged the butterflies as well. So, you know, if you want to do that, you can do that. Again, you probably only really need to Mod Podge the top layer, um, but it's up to you. The thing that's quite nice about that, it just makes it slightly more interesting, I suppose, to look at and, you know, yeah, slightly more going on with it and then obviously I just glue down in the middle so the first layer and then the next one like that put my glue to the side and then pop that on and then once they're all sort of stuck together, I mean, obviously I would probably leave these for a few minutes, but because I'm doing a video. And then you've got your 
three layers of your butterfly. I like to just bend mine up a bit because that just makes them, you know, that much more 3D. And then obviously you can then put something in the center. So you could pop a little flower in the center. That looks really pretty, doesn't it? So we'll just pop that down. And then if you've got a really small gem, which of course now I'm not going to be able to find one, which is annoying because I have a little packet and I thought I bought it up with me the other day, but now I can't think where it is. Oh, here it is. I knew that I'd um, bought them up recently. And then you can just put like a little diamante, let's say, in the centre there. So just pop a little dim diamond, a little glue even in the centre. Well, be careful not to get it upside down like I did, otherwise you're just going to have some weird <laughs> flat back thing stuck in the middle. There we go. How pretty is that? Just absolutely love how that looks. So you can really kind of mix them up. I mean, obviously, as you can see, you know, this one here, it's two layers of sheet music. And then the top layer is actually scrapbook paper. And as you can see, I've gone down the middle with a line of bling. So you can really kind of mix them up and, you know, come up with however you want. But so that's my first one. And the other thing that I thought was, obviously, if you've got some butterflies that you've got from, you know, maybe kits or, you know, things that you've bought in paper packs and things like that, you can also take those and mix them up. So I'm just going to take out a little bundle to make some with, you know, during this video. And then we can make, you know, some of all different types. So we've got a variety of different looking butterflies and they're not all then looking, you know, awful and the same. Well, not awful, hopefully not awful anyway. Um, but so that they're not looking, you know, boring, boring and the same. So I'll just take a few different types. I've got these huge ones that were from, I think they were from a Kanban kit. You can see there, I've torn that one unfortunately. Um, but I mean, they might work quite nicely. That one is torn, but let me just, sorry, I did not my camera there. Let me just try and repair this a little bit. I mean, to be honest, this is probably not the ideal one to use. I should have pulled in a different one, but it was just because I thought this black background would look good. So, right, I'll just leave that to sort of repair itself for a few minutes. So again, I'm just going to take in sheet music. So I might have um, sheet music for say this one. And what I'll do, I'll just again, cut along there. I can probably get two out of that folded up, I think. You know, two layers, I mean, not two butterflies. So again, just then double that up and then just hold it in place. You know, as I say, it really doesn't have to be, you know, 100% perfect. You're just looking to get it good enough, really. And then just cut around. I have to confess that I haven't made these for a really long time. Um, I went through a little phase, obviously as per my pot, that you can see. And then, uh, like all these things, you kind of then forget, don't you, and don't make something for a while. And um, I just thought, oh, you know what, that's quite a fun thing to do. So, uh, you know, let's make some of those. And obviously what's happened is now I'm just hoarding them I was going to say because I'm running low. Well, I'm not running low, obviously, but that's what happens with me. I end up just hoarding things because I'm like, oh, I don't want to get rid of that. So, um, yeah, hopefully by making some more, it will enable me to part with them. And obviously, if you've cut into your butterfly and he's looking a bit of a strange shape, just trim around him a bit more and get him back to looking 
you know, a better shape. So, and again, just going to ink up my layers. And of course, I mean, I'm using the vintage photo. You don't have to use that. You could, again, be more adventurous and kind of mix up your colour of your ink and things like that. So, you know, don't feel that you have to be be boring like me. Um, you know, do it as you see fit. So, and I just thought I could use my fine line glue here, probably. If I can get it out, hold on. This is probably the perfect, perfect project for that glue. So there we go. Oh, again, I'm back to now. I need to have my glasses on to be able to put it back on the thing. Oh gosh. It's obviously like an age thing because um, I only actually bought my glasses a couple of months ago. I just got some cheap ones, you know, from, from I think it was Poundland or somewhere. Um, you know, so they're not like proper um, prescription glasses or anything like that. But I think they were the 0.25 or something, you know, for close up work thinking oh you know my eyesight's sort of not looking so good lately and um you know at first I thought oh these are amazing you know really made this huge difference and you know obviously don't get me wrong they really have made a big difference but oops, I have noticed that since I've had them now whether or this was going to suddenly be happening anyway or whether the glasses have escalated it I'm not too sure but I have noticed that my eyesight's deteriorated even further. So now what I was doing sort of, you know, with no problem, now I'm like, oh, where's my glasses? Or it could be that obviously I'm just loving being able to see so much more clearly with the glasses that actually, you know, why struggle? Why struggle when you can use your glasses? But yeah. It's hard to know whether they've actually made the problem escalate further or whether actually it's just because it's so much nicer with them. Okay, so I'll just tap that glue. So you see, I mean, it's nice to have a variety of um, little centres. Of course, you don't even have to put a centre at all. You can just leave yours, you know, completely, completely naked in the centre. But I think they're nice to, um, to mix up, aren't they? And have a few different ones and again obviously you know he is obviously still wet but you can then just bend your your wings up like that make him as 3d as you like so this one here I will do I think with some book page so I'll just take my book page there and I just like to then cut it smaller you know to be able to actually just have a smaller piece to work with while I'm cutting, so. Okay. Cut around there. Oops. Didn't make a very good job of that one. Oh well, never mind. And I mean, the other thing is, once they're inked up and once they're on a page, you know, they're not really going to be that noticeable if you've got you know one of the pages slightly off or something that's really not going to be that noticeable so you know don't don't get too stressed about it okie dokie okay so this will be the last one probably that I'm going to actually talk you through my process because of course who needs to be listening to what I'm doing because it's not like something really complicated or anything but 
I will then be a bit quieter. Well, I won't be quieter. I'll obviously be chatting, but I'll be quieter about what we're doing anyway. And um, we can just relax and chat and, you know, have a nice time. So again, just... So it's quite a nice way to use up your book pages as well. So there we go. And as I say, I mean, yeah, I have Mod Podged. Um, I think the majority of these in the pot are Mod Podged. Um, I actually can't remember whether I Mod Podged them before gluing them together. I probably did, if I'm truthful. But obviously, because I was doing, you know, my mass making video, I didn't really want to be Mod Podging, you know, waiting for things to dry. So... Yeah, you might want to experiment because I'm just thinking if I mod podge the layers, well, I wouldn't mod podge all the layers, obviously, but even the top layer, if I did that once it's stuck together, it may well stick to the layers beneath. So, yeah, probably you'd want to mod podge them first before actually assembling your butterfly layers. But, you know, play around and see see what you find. Um, so I'm going to just do this big one now with the sheet music. So I'm just going to chop that down. I'm not going to chat any more about what we're doing because of course it's um, pretty obvious really what we're doing I suppose now. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to be crafting now. Crafting silently. Well, no, not silently obviously. I have just looked in my camera. Oh, I don't, oh, I hope that I am in frame. Right, let me just move my camera slightly up. Maybe that will improve things. Okay. So I hope that everybody's having a good day. I hope you're, um, you know, doing some crafting, having a nice time. Hope that things are good where you are. Um, you know a kind of evolving time I guess isn't it and different places are at obviously different stages of their you know whether they're locked in or not locked in and things I have to say uh, well yeah lots of people seem to be out at the weekend um, you know the roads seemed noticeably busier you know, we live on quite a main road and what had been quite quiet for a few days, it just seemed noticeably busier. Um, it sounds maybe not so busy today. I'm not sure. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know whether... I don't know. I just... Um, it's a worrying time still and, you know, people really should be taking the advice I don't know I probably shouldn't really be getting into <laughs> to it too much because obviously there are scenarios where people have to go out and you know things like that but I don't know it just seemed like it was more you know busier than it it has been for the last couple of weeks so it just felt like people were a bit more relaxing the lockdown you know, even though we haven't been told to, even though in fact we've been advised not to, you know, not to start relaxing it. But anyway, we've been still, um, you know, living in lockdown because I just, why would you not, you know, why would you want to risk yourself, your family or other people? It, just, just why would you? So, yeah, we have just been going out for our little bike rides. Um, we did another couple of bike rides at the weekend. So, you know, to be honest, that just um, improves things, really, being able to get out. Today, it's looking quite overcast, and it certainly felt very chilly this morning when I got up. Well, I mean, not chilly, but our house is like an older house. So, um, you know, as soon as the heating's not on... If it's not really warm outside the house is quite cold so obviously where it has been nicer we had turned the heating off and um, <laughs> yeah so this morning I'm not saying it was freezing 
but it definitely the house feels quite chilly so uh, yeah I haven't been outside so I don't know what the weather's like but it was raining also earlier I'm filming this on Monday so obviously you know for you guys I'm filming this like yesterday if you see what I mean oh I love that big one that's really nice um yeah so don't know whether I will be going for a bike ride or anything I only really go for bike rides and things when the weather is pretty nice and definitely not when it's windy if I can help it I mean occasionally you get caught out and you go for a bike ride thinking it's thinking it's nicer than it is or thinking it's less windy than it is and then you get out and it's like oh my gosh I'm being blown to bits on my bike And I'm probably repeating myself again now because um, I know that I've said this before, but obviously this lockdown thing, this is a bit of a conversation killer because you're not really doing anything. But yeah, last week my son and I had gone for a bike ride. It was really windy. I just felt like I could literally walk faster than I was biking. But I mean, I did stay the course. I did stay on my bike, but there were one, one or two times where I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to literally get off and walk it. So... Um, but I, I did stay and did carry on. But that was one of those days where it looked glorious and um, it was only once you got out on your bike. You know, kind of if you were just out in the car or something like that. I mean, obviously we're not going out in the car, but, you know, if you were in normal circumstances, you probably wouldn't have even noticed it was windy. But it was just that on your bike, obviously you noticed the most minuscule bit of wind and it's like oh my gosh that's hard work so yeah it felt like that okay these are my butterfly printables these little ones and these are the ones that I have printed on that glossy photo paper I know I've said it hundreds of times but you know the glossy photo paper that I ordered by mistake didn't realise it was glossy so I thought they would be really cute to have some glossy butterflies. So, um, yeah, that's what they are. You know what I should do, really, is probably all my cutting, you know, more like assembly line style. So I might just do that and I might cut a couple more from my template as well. So this is one that I've cut on my scan and cut and... Um, it's chopped off some of the butterfly, so I'm just going to trim around that because it's a bit of a weird shape at the moment. Okay. Well, I was still persevering with the um, Rene Zellweger uh, mini series that I had mentioned before. It was called What If on Netflix. I'm not sure that I can cope with it much more. It just seems I don't know I mean she obviously is really good in it as she's you know really good in everything isn't she but it just doesn't seem to be well to say it doesn't seem to be going anywhere that's not really true it it is kind of going somewhere but I don't know it's just it's sort of going somewhere but pointlessly if you see what I mean um, I'm not kind of convinced, I think, by the plot. I'm not sure, but for some reason, it's just not really, I don't know, not not convincing, maybe? Yeah, perhaps that's the word, not convincing. So, um, yeah, I'm on the verge of now giving up, I think, with that one. Oops. And then, goodness knows what we'll be watching then. Because uh, I don't think we've got anything else lined up. I noticed that one or two people have commented and said that they're doing the um, online quiz. You know, the pub quiz. So that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we're only doing it because, obviously, of the lockdown. But... It's um, it's just been something a bit fun and a bit different to do. So I hope you're enjoying it if you've been doing it. 
We are absolutely awful. I don't even want to say my score out loud. Well, not just my score, our score generally as a household. I mean, we're not playing as a household, if you see what I mean. We are playing against each other, but we are all equally as bad because our scores only seem to have a couple of, you know, a couple of numbers in them. So we are generally pretty appalling, all of us. I can't say that any of us are standing out as, you know, streaks ahead or anything like that. We are all pretty rubbish. But, yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, some of the rounds you think, oh, well, I should be a bit better at this. No, still rubbish. They've got like a TV and film um, round, which I thought, oh, perhaps I'll be a bit better at that. No, still not really very good at that. Absolutely appalling anything that comes to sport. You know, literally clueless. Not got a clue. So, yeah, not not great. But hey, it's in the privacy of our own home. Luckily, nobody else, nobody else can um, see our scores. Nobody else can, can hear. Nobody knows just how rubbish we are. And we are all quite enjoying doing them. We haven't actually done them um, live. I'm trying to think whether we have done one live. I don't think we've done any live. We've tended to do them, you know, after the live event. Um, not not after as in the same night. Because my gosh, I would be asleep by then. Because it doesn't start till 8.15. So I guess it wouldn't really end till about 10 or something. But yeah, we've done them like on, you know, on catch up. So... But they're just something a bit fun and a bit different to do. And the kids have quite enjoyed doing them. I mean, even my daughter, who, you know, constantly pretends that she knows the answer. Oh, I know that one, I know that one. And you ask her and she just says, oh, I can't tell you because it's a quiz. So, yeah. And we managed to do a food shop, so... That was good because I think I said before how the kids are just eating us out of house and home. Literally, I mean, where we live in quite an old house, we've got like a, um, you know, a big old fashioned larder cupboard. It's not like a walk-in cupboard or anything like that, but it's, you know, full, full size with like a cold outside wall type thing. And, um, you know, so I mean, it's pretty big. It holds a lot of stuff. But obviously, it's not like a kitchen cupboard where it's silent or anything. I mean, it's like a sort of door to a room, I guess. So, um, you know, you can easily hear it when it's being opened and closed. Oh, it's so annoying because sometimes all I can hear, you know, if I'm like downstairs, all I can hear is feet running downstairs and then that door opening. Obviously, somebody rummaging for a little while and then closing again. And it could be any of them, including my husband, you know. Oh, it's so annoying. And sometimes I'll shout out, who's that? And they'll just, you know, call back whoever. What are you doing? Oh, just getting something to eat. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's, um, that's the latest, really, with what's going on. So we're back to the homeschooling that restarted last week because obviously it had been the Easter holidays, which, wow, I was so pleased. But no, we're back to that homeschooling malarkey now. So um, I actually did a little bit today already before coming up to do my video. So we were doing like times tables. This with my six year old. So, you know, thankfully we're still at very easy stages. We're still just doing like two times table. Um, I think numbers kind of scare her a little bit at the moment. And I can remember my oldest, um, my son, he used to be a bit like that. And we kind of had to sit down and have a chat about, you know, don't be scared of numbers. You know, they're going to help you throughout your whole life. And, you know, they're not scary. You just need to kind of become familiar with them so you're comfortable. And... Um, and weirdly, he then sort of did, and he seemed to overcome his 
his fear of numbers. So um, hopefully she will as well, because she seems a bit at that stage. I mean, to the point I said to her, you know, do numbers scare you a bit? And she was like, hmm. I said, well, you know, they're nothing to be scared of. The purpose of this is so that we can see what you do and you don't know. And then if you don't know something, we know that's the things that we've got to, you know, concentrate on learning. So instead of thinking, oh, but I don't know that, because she doesn't like not knowing things. You know, I said to her, we'll view that as, well, that's good. We've now discovered you don't know that. So that's great. That's something we know that we can teach you. So, yeah, hopefully she's going to be viewing numbers in a whole new way. We had some fun last week with one of our lessons. Again, I mean, we're just like winging it. And so trying to do things in some sort of, you know, creative and hopefully what would be an interesting way, you know, to keep her interested, I guess. Um, so with one of our lessons last week, we just played with money. So just got like um, some coins and things out from her money box and, you know, just like looked at them. Because I mean, obviously, you know, she's six and so she didn't really know what coins were what. I mean, she's heard you, you know, she's heard us say maybe, oh, grab a pound or, you know, like if the boys need to take a pound to school or anything like that, you know, grab a pound or maybe sometimes we've had to give her a pound but she doesn't know you know she didn't really know which coin would have been a pound you know so we just looked at the coins you know this is a pound this is like you know 50p this is you know we did all the coins and then um it was quite cool because she actually had quite a few coins and so we were able then to do like you know she had some two pound coins and things so we were able to make up like say £12.50 but in different ways so it was like okay this is you know 10 one pound coins and a two pound coin and a 50p so that's £12.50 and then obviously we took the two pound coin away and put two one pound coins and said you know this is 12 one pound coins and a 50p so that's still £12.50 it's the same so we did that now I'm not saying that she would now that she would now be able to go and do our shopping or anything like that. Of course she wouldn't, but at least she's got a little bit more understanding of, you know, what's what and things like that. So, and the time flew by doing that. She obviously quite enjoyed it because kids kind of like playing with money, don't they? So she was quite pleased to do that. So, um, yeah, we had a bit of fun with that and it seemed quite a good way to keep her interest. What was the other thing that we did that worked quite well? Uh, I can't remember now, to be honest, but we've done a few things, but some have been more successful than others because some things she's not really been that interested and so it's more of a battle to kind of make her do it. And then, of course, it's not great because she's then a bit negative like the next time, you know. So, um, yeah, that was one that did work quite well. And then at the weekend, we had a complete break from all of the whole working thing. She spent half the weekend on... We managed to download Skype onto her little fire tablet thing that she's got. Because previously she had been using my iPad. Um, and I didn't really want her to keep using my iPad because then she's like draining the battery. Plus I was obviously terrified that she was going to drop it and break it. Um... So, yeah, managed to download, like, Skype onto her little, you know, fire tablet thing. So she spent half the weekend Skyping with her little cousin. So <laughs> at first I did think, oh, my gosh, this is even more annoying because um, it was constant. Oh, mum, mum, you know, he's gone now. How can I get him back? And oh, I thought, oh, no, this is going to be an even more traumatic experience but she got the hang of it and um yeah they kind of then you know it was really great although I have to say they were obviously so bored the pair of them because um they were like on Skype not even really talking um 
And at one point I heard him say, you know, I'm just going to hang up now because I just need to go to the toilet. And she was drawing at the time. She just didn't even say anything. So I said to her, oh, sweetheart, you know, he's just said he's going to hang up now because he's going to the toilet. And she was like, hello, hello, oh, okay, okay. I said, oh, weren't you even kind of listening? She was like, oh, I was just doing my drawing. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were obviously kind of just so in desperate need of company, you know, other than the people within their own four walls. But then they're not even really kind of speaking. Well, I guess they're a bit like all of us and have got nothing really to say. But I guess just knowing that they've got somebody else on the end of the phone makes it slightly enjoyable. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> I did have to laugh because I just thought, oh gosh, she's not even listening. And then she was like on the trampoline saying, you know, oh, I'm, I'm taking you out on the trampoline now. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he had lots of fun there on, on the trampoline with her. But, I mean, again, I know I've said this tons of times, you know, not, not just through this lockdown, but generally in life. I mean, technology is just so amazing, isn't it? You know, it's certainly helping everybody get through the lockdown. And isn't it amazing that we can all be in touch with our loved ones and, you know, still see one another and, you know, it's so much kind of nicer than just hearing their voice at the end of a phone. So, um, yeah, just think it's really improved the situation greatly, hasn't it? I do sort of wonder what it will be like, funnily enough, the first time that we all see each other again. You know, is it going to feel really emotional? Or actually, will it not really feel that bad? Because actually, we feel like we've been seeing each other anyway on FaceTime all the time. I don't know. I mean, there will be an element of, I guess, fear a, a little bit, you know, because... Uh, Hoping that you're not going to be taking anything germs, you know, with you or anything. If you're seeing sort of older people, especially, you know. I mean, my parents aren't quite in that age bracket yet, but, you know, they're not that far out. And, yeah, if you kind of think, oh, will I just be paranoid and terrified in case I'm, you know taking something into their home. I don't know. You know, because you think, well, much as I'm missing them, you know, you'd never forgive yourself, would you, if you actually then took took um, germs, you know, or the virus or whatever. In, I mean, you know, touch wood. We won't get it, but I mean, obviously, eventually, I guess, well, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm talking about things that I don't really know much about and I'm not really qualified to talk on. But yeah, you just kind of worry and think, well, how's that going to pan out when you do see people? It's just going to be worrying, isn't it? But anyway, but I do wonder what what our first meeting will be like, whether we will all be very, I don't know, very gushy and very emotional and you know, because of course it's been quite a long time really now since we've all seen each other, so. Yeah. Okay. My daughter's missing school, bless her. She's missing seeing her friends and, you know, she really likes school, so she's, um, I think, looking forward to getting back. My son, obviously my 13-year-old, you know, I mean, he always did quite like school, but now he's obviously at that age where it's just not, you know, 
not really cool is it to like school once you get a bit older so um but even he i think is like ready to go back now and i did say well that's funny isn't it i bet you never thought you'd see the day that you would actually be like looking forward to going back to school he's like yeah i know i said you know are all your friends saying they can't wait to get back now as well he said yeah quite a few of them so, you know, he's not missing the work, obviously. Well, I mean, he's still been doing work. And, I mean, at his school, they have been actually setting them work. Um, which, actually, we have now got one or two things from my daughter's school as well. But, yeah, they've been giving them work to do. So he has still been doing some form of work. Um, but I think he's, yeah, he's quite looking forward to seeing his mates and stuff. So... the time I'm just going to check well 41 minutes that's that's flown by time flies when you're when you're crafting just wondered about a flower they're a little bit monstrous those ones um, I've got these little tiny ones but they're pink so they're they're not really right I have got some more tiny ones but I don't want to have to go and dig them out and I don't want to keep you all waiting for ages whilst I go and get them. Ah, I have got a little one here. I thought I might have a couple in the tin. Oops. Oh gosh, come on. Oh, come on. I don't know how good that looks now anyway, to be honest. Oh well, should we just put it on there anyway? Oh my gosh, every time I touch it, it just kind of sticks on my finger. Oh, I don't think I like that on there, to be honest. After all that, I might as well have not bothered searching for it, might I? Right, let's just see if I've got any more of the black bling, like a string of it, because... Um, Yeah, I think I probably need like just rows of two. So just trim this one down. Just to get rid of those little thread type bits at the side. Oops. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm all fingers and thumbs here. So I've been working on our holiday scrapbook and um, I'm going to put a video up, I think, of decorating it a little bit. I know we're sort of junk journalers, really, but um, I'm going to be using some of my junk journal supplies inside the scrapbook. And I just thought, well, it might be fun to, oops, to put up. So um, I haven't done the video yet, but hopefully I'll get around to doing that maybe maybe tomorrow or something I don't know when it will go up but hopefully soon absolutely loving my masterboard book so thank you so much to those people who've said that they're also creating one because um oh I just can't tell you how much I love mine it's really really bringing me quite a lot of joy at the moment um yeah I just absolutely love it so yes thank you so much to those people who have also done one um I hope that you are liking yours just as much as I'm liking mine I mean I'm you know I know it's not something really rev revolutionary but for me it was just the having it in one place that was making it so so nice I think um you know having it in one place rather than loose scraps of paper which then you know they get screwed up they get lost they you know they don't really stay nice so for me having it in one place where actually it is staying nice and it's actually 
you know, it's portable. So when I go downstairs in the evenings, um, it's just working really well. So I have made another one, um, which I'm debating whether I might try and make a couple and sell them. But obviously they do take a fair amount of time to make. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm not really too sure because obviously, you know, they'd have to be for a reasonable price because obviously no one would buy them otherwise. But then <clears throat> I think the other one took about four, four hours to make, something like that. And this one, obviously, because I wasn't really doing videos, I kind of lost track of how long it took. But a similar length of time. So, yeah, I'm not sure. But I have got one more of the books. So I'm going to hopefully make one more um, when I get round to it. So, yeah. But it's it's just been really nice having something different to do. And I'm really hooked on the whole snippet rolls and... Um, The, well, I guess that collage book, really, at the moment, because it just makes everything so easy. You know, literally, when you come to pull something together, it's like, wow, that took me, like, no time at all. I mean, obviously, like we said before, you have done the, the hard work already. It's not like it literally took you no time. You know, you've already put the hours in up front, if you see what I mean. Um, but when you then want a bit of sort of inspiration or you know want to just make something really pretty and lovely it comes together in like no time so yeah really 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 enjoying it right there we go so let me check the time okay so I think we're coming up to about 50 minutes so just going to put my glue out the way so how many have we made? And then I'm just going to show you sort of how it would look on a page. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, so that's not too bad. So if I just pull in a journal, which I'm kind of inundated with journals at the moment because um, I, I have had so many things you know, that I can't post at the moment. I mean, the post office, it is open, but as I said before, you know, we're not really going in shops or anything. Um, and obviously I definitely don't really want to waste a trip and then find they're not open. So, uh, yeah, but I will get round to filming those things soon. So just to give you an idea though, this is how your butterflies would kind of look. So just, show you a couple of them really really pretty aren't they you know and I love the way that they're 3d and um, you know a bit more to them than just just some oh, just something completely plain so yeah I hope that you like them hope you manage to make some if you fancy it and don't forget um, my little my little technique for the template Literally, it was acetate and a Sharpie to get my little um, shape. So, you know, on the screen of the computer. So, but be careful of your monitor. So, thank you very much for joining me. And I hope you will stay safe and have a great day and join me again soon. Thanks then. Bye.